along the thriving city. Efficient management is key to its success, whichever the sector. For example, building, transport, manufacturing, healthcare, and of course the many businesses and social services. Employees in these sectors can face a number of different occupational hazards, and each employer is required to provide a safe working environment, safe machinery and working practices. And sometimes it's unavoidable to use personal protective equipment. Then employers must have a comprehensive personal protective equipment program to ensure the staff are equipped with the appropriate equipment and that they are able to use and maintain it properly for it to be totally effective. Wow, Monica, I didn't know that our company owned a fancy club like this. Yes, it's really great, isn't it? Mm. Although we've only been here three months, we've been so lucky to have had the chance to visit other departments. I've learned so much from these trips. Me too. I'm Simon Chung, Senior Manager of the Property Department. Hello, Executive Trainee Monica. Hi, my name's Jack Chan. I'm glad you're here. The Property Department, as you know, is extensive. We cover a wide range of activities here. So it's a good opportunity for you to familiarize yourselves with personal protective equipment. Ah, Stephen. Just the person, Stephen, in charge of occupational Hello. safety. Hi. Stephen will be giving you a guided tour today. If you have any questions, just ask him. Stephen, you take care of our visitors. I have a meeting with the pool cleaning firm. Yesterday, a workman was injured on the job. He wasn't wearing non-slip shoes. I have to see the contractor to discuss safety matters. Also, the use of protective equipment. Excuse me. Of course. Bye, See you Simon. later. Shall we go? Sure. sure. Tell me, Stephen, when purchasing personal protective equipment, is it true that the more expensive, the better? Oh, not always. The thing is to use the appropriate equipment for the job in hand in order to ensure the best protection. Simon mentioned pool cleaning earlier. I suggest we start with that. Okay. Oh, this is where the detergents and other chemicals are stored, right? Am I right that the water is disinfected using these chemicals? Hmm. And what about the handling of the chemicals? Is it dangerous? Not if the proper safety control measures are in place. If we look at the broader perspective, it's every company's responsibility to provide their staff with a safe working environment and safe equipment. So, for example, for staff working at heights, a platform should be installed that the workers can safely move around on, but sometimes, due to the constraints of the local conditions, engineering measures and safety systems cannot effectively control the safety and health hazards, so personal protective equipment must also be used. And emergency situations, such as cleaning up spilled chemicals or repair work, personal protective equipment is essential. Take this room, for example. For safety reasons, the ventilation has been increased to enhance airflow. But even so, staff are required to wear protection, such as special gloves and masks, when handling dangerous oh. chemicals. So you could say that the personal protective equipment is the worker's last defense? You could say that. Why are you putting on that mask, Jack? Don't worry, I can film with it on. As the old saying goes, fight troops with tanks and floods with dikes. Why? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't get it at all. That you must use the right tool to fix the problem. This room's extremely well ventilated. And you're not handling any hazardous chemicals, right? So there's no need to wear a mask, it just makes you uncomfortable. So, if the working environment permits it, we needn't use protective equipment. So then, use the personal protective equipment that's appropriate to the situation. In short, to do a job well, use, use the, the right, right equipment! equipment. <laughs> you sound like a double axe! But of course, we've been rehearsing all morning. Monica, you know this personal protective equipment thing covers a wide range. You're right. That's why I wanted to look at it systematically. Mm. You know, when using personal protective equipment, six steps or principles have to be followed to ensure maximum safety. What are the six principles? I've got them right here. A full personal protective equipment program should include the following steps. One, conduct an assessment of the potential risks. Find out what personal protective equipment is needed and the level of protection required. Two, select the appropriate equipment accordingly. Several points must be considered. The requirements laid down by the law, equipment applications, 
product standards, as well as ergonomics, health conditions of the user and compatibility of different protective equipment. 3. Train the staff to properly use and inspect the protective equipment and provide them with the necessary guidance and information. Explain to them why they should use personal protective equipment and the function and restrictions of this equipment. 4. Provide sufficient quantities of protective equipment. 5. Ensure efficient maintenance and repair of equipment and provide proper storage. 6. Monitor and record the usage of protective equipment in order to facilitate review and improvements at a later date. Stephen was saying that to do a job well you need the right tools, right? Choosing the appropriate equipment, that's the second step. <laughs> so he must be applying the same six principles. Sure, he took the Occupational Safety and Health Council Safety Certificate course. He really knows his stuff. Monica, I think you've taken a shine to Stephen. Well now, I think I'm jealous. Hey, what about the film you made? I want to see it. Okay. Stephen, when using protective equipment, apart from choosing the right equipment, it must meet international standards, right? Ah, I see you've really done your homework. You must be joking. I told her that. <sighs> Why don't you just concentrate on your filming? <laughs> so, tell me how many international standards are there? I'll tell you what. Let's go over to the construction site and you'll find out. Okay. There are several, in fact. Take this safety helmet. This one meets the British European standards. See? You can mm. tell by this label. There are also other standards for equipment, such as American, Australian, New Zealand, Japanese, Chinese, and Canadian. When choosing protective equipment, it's best to refer to these standards. They guarantee a high quality of design and materials and also product testing. The leaflet seems very detailed. Yes, both management and equipment users must read them carefully. They must learn to use the equipment correctly to ensure the maximum protection. When choosing equipment, apart from giving proper protection, it must be easy to use and be comfortable. That way staff won't mind wearing it. Yes, you're right. If no one uses it, it's a waste of money. Look out, Jack! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. I look so stupid. What a fool. Steve must have thought I was a right idiot. I just hope he doesn't tell Simon. Sure, but do you know why you fell over? It was these stupid shoes here. Cost me a thousand dollars, but they're really slippery. When working at heights, your safety is important. The law stipulates that if the situation won't allow for a safety platform, then workmen have to use a safety harness. Of course, the gear has to meet international standards. The buckle must be secured to an independent lifeline like this. Another thing, always check the safety line. Make sure it doesn't chafe against any sharp edges. You don't want it wearing through and breaking, right? But if you follow the proper procedures like me, there's no need to worry. Wow, that was a heck of a fall. I must have fallen a hundred feet. But what happened? One good thing, though, I had my helmet on. Oh, oh you hurt, mister? Uh, uh, no, but I don't know what happened. Look, you see the arrestor here? You should have passed the line through with this side up. That way, if you fall, the arrestor locks up. But you fastened it the wrong way, and that's why you fell so far. Oh, oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, uh. Help me! Help me! Help me! What on earth is it? Oh, I was dreaming that I fell off a scaffolding. Huh? How did it happen? I didn't fasten the harness right. Lucky it was a dream. But using a safety harness correctly can save a person's life. Come on. On the news yesterday, a man with the safety harness fell to his death. That's right, but he didn't attach the buckle to a secure anchoring point, and that's the reason why he fell. So, correct usage is very important. Uh, oh, I guess you're right. A waste of money, and a waste of life, too. Hey, you said you had a VCD to show me. Hey, you're right, I fell asleep with it in my hand. Let's take a look. Proper utilization of safety equipment is very important. 
For example, dust masks should use the original filters. Remember, some filters can't be washed since a fiber loses its effectiveness after being soaked in water. Before using a mask, you should always test it to see if it fits your face. Make sure it fits snugly against the face to ensure maximum protection. It's very important to check the equipment before use. Take this respirator, for example. It has an exhalation valve. If the air valve becomes detached or blocked, the respirator won't function properly, and toxic fumes can get in. A safety helmet is a common piece of equipment for head protection, but some workmen use them as seats, toss them around like toys, or knock them about. This treatment damages the structure of the helmet. Some like to put a towel underneath the helmet. However, this alters the impact absorption characteristics of the helmet and reduces the impact protection for your head. You may also be tempted to paint your helmet a different color. You want it to look a bit different. However, the thinner contained in the spray paint will reduce the structural strength of the helmet. Sometimes, even with simple things like earplugs, improper use will greatly reduce their effectiveness. Here's how to use the earplugs correctly. To put the earplug in your right ear, take your left hand around the back of your head, pull the ear up and just insert it gently. Use this method and they won't fall out easily. Therefore, when using any personal protective equipment, it's always very important to use it properly. It was pretty good, don't you think? Sure. So you take me out to lunch? What now? I'm not hungry. But if you are, have a cheesy. I don't believe this. You're so cheap. <laughs> Stop complaining. Wow, he's wearing a safety helmet, earmuffs, and eye protection. All that stuff. <laughs> it's so complicated. Mm. You're right. We sometimes need to combine different pieces of safety equipment, and it's not always easy to wear them on top of each other. Now, this three-in-one equipment solves all the problems. Excuse me, why don't you try this? Each piece of equipment has a storage locker. It's easily accessed when needed, and it's kept out of the sun and rain so it lasts longer. See? Each worker has his own earplugs. It's more hygienic that way. No risk of spreading infection. Mm. Don't think that washing safety shoes is a waste of time. If dirt gets clogged up in the tread there, it reduces effectiveness, and the shoes are no longer non-slip. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for telling, telling us. us. We need to enhance awareness. That's why we have regular training. We must teach staff to use the equipment properly. Remember the six principles in the Personal Protective Equipment Program. Point three, staff training. Remember? He's, He's really, really amazing. amazing. Excuse me. Yes? Sorry to disturb you, but is your manager Jackie around? Oh, I'm Jackie. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought Jackie was a man. Oh, it's okay. Stephen told me about you. He said you might want to take a look around the warehouse. I work with Jack. Monica. Hello. And I'm Jack. Right, this way, please. Right, thank you. Hmm, you have a wide range of products stored here. That's right. For example, these goggles here. Goggles will protect you from dust particles, flying debris, and chemical splashes. When buying the various safety equipment, we must take into consideration Hong Kong's hot, humid climate. <sighs> See? Take these goggles, for example. They'd better have direct or indirect ventilation holes. If they're uncomfortable to wear, no one's going to use them. Yeah, that's right. Like I always say, if it's not used, it's a waste of money. Say, Jackie, what I'd like to know is why you need so much warehouse space to store all the safety equipment. You've forgotten already? What about principle number four? Provide sufficient quantities. Take our firm, for example. 
Many employees either work or supervise on building sites, and many others do maintenance and cleaning. Therefore, we need to store sufficient quantities of equipment. Helmets, gloves, respirators, eye protectors, goggles, and so on. Some items need replacing often, for example, gloves or earplugs, masks, and filter cartridges. Storage is based on the quantities used, so the stock numbers must be carefully planned and properly controlled. Hmm, everything here is so neat and tidy. It's impressive. We need to systematically store the personal protective equipment for a quick location. As we have hundreds of users, many different sizes are needed. So we have sufficient quantities in all sizes. See, if a worker needs some equipment, but he can't find the right size, he may just try to compromise, use a size that's not suitable, or just use nothing at all. And that's dangerous. Big helmet on a small head. That's really dangerous. So, I guess if a company requires sufficient quantities in each size, it just orders a whole lot of everything. A bulk purchase gets you a bigger discount, that's for sure. <laughs> but storage and maintenance can be a big problem. It's no good storing too much or too little equipment. See, if the equipment is old, it becomes useless. Take this respirator cartridge, for example. If it's too old, it's not going to work. Here, this shoe sole is another example. When stored for a long time, the sole degenerates and it becomes hard. If you walk on it, it can easily crack. Mm, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. You have detailed stock records. Detailed records make it easy to check your stock situation. What's more, you can see if it's past its use-by date. And in the event of a problem, you can easily trace equipment back. The personal protective equipment records are in the computer too, so we know which worker is using what and which equipment will need to be replaced. Stock control is a lot easier. Hey, it's a really good system. Do you have any other questions? Oh, sure. Tell me, do you have a boyfriend? Hey! <laughs> sure. You met him yesterday. We did? Steven? Mm. Monica, it looks like we're both losers. Just stop fooling around. Hey, I'm sorry, Jackie. Just ignore him. <laughs> now, Jackie, can you tell me... Um... I can't believe one week has gone by so fast. I must say I've learned a lot about personal protective equipment. In fact, it's important that we follow the six principles for optimum safety at all times. Things are changing and companies in Hong Kong are much more regulated now. I must catch up with the times otherwise I'll be phased out. <laughs>